Hallelujah. Praise Yah, praise Yah, all children of Yah, let us arise, arise, arise. All that are in the land of the living. Oh, come on now. Come on now. We can do better than that. Oh, hallelujah. It's the Shabbat. Hallelujah. We're in His rest. Hallelujah. Let us greet one another. Hallelujah. Bless Yah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
And Elohim spoke out these words, saying, I am Yahweh your Elohim, who has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, and now thou hast a slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, or any likes of that, which is he comes above, which is the earth beneath, which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I am Yahweh your Elohim, I am jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children, to the third and fourth of those who hate me. But shall name a commandment to the thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahweh Elohim to not, for Yahweh did not leave unpunished, bring the same to not. Remember the Shabbat to set it apart. Six days you do the and do all your work. The seventh day is the Sabbath, Yahweh Elohim. In it you want to win your work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor your stranger within your gates. For in six days you are in heaven and the earth. The sea, now there is in them, and rest is on the day, to free up blessed Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother, so your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahweh Elohim has given you. You do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not steal, you do not make false witness against your neighbor, you do not covet in your house, you do not covet in your wife, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatsoever belongs to your neighbors. <laughs> All right, glory to the king. Mm. Do I need a movie, Lord? Hallelujah. Sound like Alvin and Chipmunk, Lord. Y'all's good, isn't it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Most high honor, y'all. You alone are worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for your tender mercies that are new upon us every morning. We need you this morning because without you, our understanding, our comprehension couldn't be open. So, Holy Spirit, move in the midst of your people, minister to each and every individual. Let there be a sincereness in our hearts this morning and a hunger and thirst for your truth and your word. That your laws remain in our minds. In the magnificent name of Yahshua, hallelujah. All right, you may be seated, Israel. <clears throat> Everybody all right? All right, good. Hey, uh, oh yeah, by the way, I've been talking to Ron, uh, Ron Dalton there. If, you, uh, if all y'all out there Whoever is planning on attending uh, the Hebrews, the Negroes conference up in Detroit, I need for y'all uh, to try to give me what I'm looking at as far as personnel or people that are coming. Now, it, you know, uh, I looked at some of it. I'm going to look at it more extensively tomorrow, and I'm going to speak more about it on Blog Talk Radio next week. So we have plenty of time. Um, I may even do a video on Patreon and, and uh, break it down even more so. Uh, it seems like an exorbitant fee, but it's really not an exorbitant fee considering everything that's going on because the fee covers everything uh, from all those days. And I'll speak to him more. Um, it wasn't good for me to try to communicate with him while I'm on the road, if you understand what I mean, through text messages. So um, I'll call him tomorrow and, and we'll um, uh, see what's going on because he offered me a group rate uh, for the people that wanted to attend. Um, at that straight way. And of course, I'm sure some of you saw the video. If you didn't see the video, we're going to play it in the dining hall <coughs> to, uh, sometime today. Um, all right. Other than that, everybody all right? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Are you encouraged? Yes, sir. Yeah. Feel like running through a troop and leaping over a wall? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'll, um, I'll take the running through the troop. I don't know about their leaping stuff, though, man. Yeah. <laughs> he put me in the old younger days. It seemed like the thing to do, didn't it? All right. Um, I'm going to talk about a message here today. Um, and we're, we're mostly just going to stick for the better part of it. In the Gospels, you know, I, I um, had some people uh, ask me if, because uh, they're brand new. I've had more than one, you know, one person communicate this with me. You know, they, they can't make sense of a lot of our language, the vernacular, you know, that we use. And so I have to actually pull back a little bit. You know, if we've been around so long and we get to talking to each other, it just sounds normal. 
But then there's these brand new people coming in, huh, what, yeah, and it kind of, you know, distracts him from the message a little bit. But uh, today, uh, we're going to actually talk about uh, the occultic teachings of Jesus Christ. The real Jesus teachings today are considered to be of a cult nature. Did y'all hear me? Now, you know just as well as I do that they are not cultic. But it's the mindset of the people today that refuse to retain y'all in their knowledge. You follow me? Uh, people are satisfied with mediocrity and being mediocre. They're satisfied with exalting their opinions above the word of Yah. They even put their feelings. You know, you often hear this said many, many times, how do you feel? about something. Well, feelings ain't got nothing to do with it. It's just whatever the truth is. And so you don't have to worry about anybody coming behind this message today. There's another one of them messages that's sitting right there smack dab in your face and it won't be repeated. But guarantee it. Guarantee it. You know why? Because it has to do with a heart issue. Hmm? Yahshua said that wherever your Treasure is what's important to you, what's your interest. There will your heart, your motivations, your desires, your direction will be also. So where truly is your heart? Because if Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, if he was here today, they would electrocute him. He was, he's, he's doomed to die no matter what generation he came in. Doomed to die. You know, all know that we all have walked out to the forms and fashions of this world. We've been influenced greatly by them. We all have. And you all know that uh, the journey that we've embarked on that we didn't call ourselves to this. As a matter of fact, we would have never called ourselves to this. Hmm? But the book says that many are called, but few are chosen. And you can tell we are chosen ones because we keep his commandments. Now, this book says some controversial things. Considering the environment and the world we're living in. I mean, after all... Some years ago, when I first heard of the National Sunday Law, you know, the Seventh-day Adventists pushed that, right? And, and what they're doing is saying they're going to make it a law that you must go to church. Because I always try to figure out how you do that in the first place. You know, how do you go to church? You know, you know what I mean? I sit back and think about this stuff and I go, this just doesn't make sense. Huh? See, people in Gnostic religion, they believe that going to church or a building, and they give more reverence for the structure of a building than they do the assembly, which is the real true assembly, which is your body. You go put on your best clothes to go to church. You put on your best behavior to go to yeah. church. Yeah. Hmm? You'll cuss at home, but you won't cuss at church. Thereby showing that you have more reverence for brick and stone. Wood and shingles. Then the care the meticulous care about the house that Yahshua said he was going to dwell in. Somebody asked me here at the feast, well, how do you pray? I said, open up my mouth. Sometimes I meditate. Hmm? I asked him, how do you pray? He says, well, I, I, I turn to the east and I look up and I, I said, really? I said, where is Yah? I'll help you out. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth 
the word of faith which we preach, right? Greater is he that is in you than he that is. So everybody be looking up out all over the place and stuff. And he's sitting right here next to you. He said right here in you, really. When you hear his voice, do you hear an audible voice out in the wild blue yonder? Or do you hear a still small voice? So where's the temple of Yah at then? You are the temple of Yah. And many times you can't hear him because you're so busy flooding out the word of Yah with so many external things. You know, we distract Yah from us because we're interested in what the radio has to say. We can't have any quiet time because there's so much riot going on within us. So I'm still trying to figure out this thing. How do you go to church when you are the assembly of Yah? See what I mean? It's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. Everything is really true. It's all about perspective. Your whole life is all about perception. And how you perceive something. I can sit here today and I'm going to tell the truth. Nothing but the truth. The whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So let me ah. It's going to be the truth. But there's going to be something inside of you that's going to resist this truth. Now, Yahshua said that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than the light because they are doing something that is evil. And they don't want light shining on their hypocritical, wicked ways. He said that everyone is of the light will come to the light. You get that? Yes, sir. So this is y'all's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. You know what I mean? He the one not only called us, but he chose us. You know, there's the elect. Then there's the very elect. Now you pick and choose which one you want to be. I want to be in the very. You know what I mean? The elect. And then the very elect. Then there's the remnant. We don't hear that word too often nowadays. We talk about it all the time being the remnant. Hmm? Some is on the outside, some on the inside. Some people are even going to make it to the kingdom by not coming through the door. And we go, what? Come on. Y'all sure said he the door, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> But he gave us an analogy of somebody climbed up over a wall. And when it came time for him to sit at the feast, oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Who are you, friend? Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm part of the number. Why come you don't have a garment on? Where's your garment? What garment are you talking about? Are your garments... Spotless flesh. Are they white as snow. snow? Are you washed in the blood of the lamb? And mind you, anything that offends is not going in. And it's an offense to carry sin and have a spotted garment when he gave you a robe that is white. That make sense? Uh, you know all this secret stuff you do that you don't think nobody know about. But you wear it every day on your face. Let me give you some analogies just for a second. huh? The joy of y'all is my. And if you don't have his joy and you're uh, walking in weakness, the only thing that really weakens you is sin. You ever notice the attitude of those who are really truly walking in lockstep with y'all? Did they have a boldness about them? A righteousness about them. Huh? They have a sincerity about them. They're secure in their person. They know who they are. They know who he is. And they have joy unspeakable. But then those of you who be tap dancing and playing around, you got them heavy faces. Countenance falling. Wearing sin all over your face. 
That's why he tells you we over and over again. Why about countenance falling? Why does your heart imagine vain things? See, you wear it. You think you hiding. But you wear it. You wear what you do. And you wear who you are. Hmm? To those who know how to discern. Everybody can't discern. Does that make sense? But the Most High gave us a particular message. And we need to be following that message. And it's still appalling to me that it's not even preached today. We're going to hit this, all right? Y'all ready? The cult, the cultic teachings of Jesus Christ. Y'all hear that? The world sees through religion and philosophy a way that everything ought to be ran. But the book says it different. You see, when the apostles, Peter, James, John, using words you understand, names you understand, when they were here in the first century, and then the disciples that they taught, everything was going pretty good. After they had passed on, then starts to enter in all these philosophies. And all these little sects start popping up all over the place. And, and everybody started having their own ideas of the deity of Yahshua. And it started bringing division. And that's how the devil does, isn't it? And I told you a long time, he, he can't beat them, join them. I told you, the, the, Satan is always the first one in assembly. Go read the Gospels. He went into the synagogue, and every time he went in there, he cast out devils. Devils, the synagogue was loaded with devils, loaded with demons. So we hear, we're going to hear what he said. And we're going to test it against the philosophies and the traditions and the teachings of men. Even you and your own heart. The world, you know, they, they have a way that they even view us as a people. Think about this. The real Jesus teaches today are considered to be a cult nature. Let's read from the same Bible that Christians and others who claim that they believe this book what it has to say. Now, this morning, because I was kind of curious, you know what I mean? When I go over these borders and stuff, I like to know what they are looking at behind these screens. And this time, boy, whoo, they detained us and checked us out and everything. Now, they didn't frisk us and all this, but they meticulously went through everything. And I mean everything. What was odd about this one right here is that I come up to this particular guard and, you know, uh, what do you do? What do you do? Blase, blase, blase. And then the next thing you know, he start asking me a barrage of questions on guns. Well, no, I don't have any. Not, not on me. Close up the door. Open back up the door again. You have hunting guns, rifles, all kinds of different guns, you know what I mean? He kept on going to the point, I said, yeah, I got all kinds of them, whole bunch of them. He kindly just raised up the thing, put a yellow slip on, said, go over there. <laughs> uh, he asked you where you're going, and stuff, but it, he made the subject about guns, 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 guns. The hypocrisy is amazing. You worried about somebody with guns and you got one on your waist. <laughs> and we supposed to automatically trust you because you have one on your waist. As the old saying goes, maybe born at night, but it wasn't what? It wasn't last night. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyway, I, I thought I would look up my name this morning. Because man, when he opened up that window, man, he looked at me, one of them crazy look like. You know what I mean? So I, I came across this one about the third line down on Google. And somebody has, somebody is warning the world about Pastor Dow. And this is what they said. They got a thing called fact. Families against cult teachings. For real. I looked it up. 
And my name, and they came up on Google, and, and this is what they are asserting in, in, in this article right here. Let's go ahead and read this, okay? All right. It says, this is what they say about me. People sell their belongings and give the money to Dowell. They are dependent on him for everything from food to clothing to toiletries. People live in rundown trailers while he lives in a nice house. It's pretty funny, isn't it? There ain't no mention in there about I used to live in a rundown trailer. Deacon Bell, you live in a rundown trailer? Oh, that's right, you're an elder. You live in a trailer, JC? No. You live in a trailer, Scott? Teacher Sandem still live in a trailer. A big one. Elder Doug, you live in a trailer? Ashley, I know you live in a trailer, right? Sister Nelly, you live in a trailer? Somebody lying. But we're going to go with it, though, okay? Because that was the time we did start in, with rundown trailers. I lived in one for quite a while, almost 15 years. Well, well, let's go on. Members live all together on the property and eat in a common dining hall. This got to be somebody know something, don't they? Anyone who disagrees with the pastor is considered as coming against him. I didn't know that. There are elders, but they are really yes men who have proven themselves to be totally devoted to the pastor. Anyone who speaks against him is considered to be speaking against God. I mean, this is some serious assertions, isn't it? We go on. People live in trailers with no running water. Yeah, I did that. They use five-gallon buckets as toilets to dump them in a pit when full. Actually, we dump them in a septic tank. A lot of emotional abuse. This is where you got to turn this camera around. Because, I mean, if it's all this emotional abuse, but you, y'all got to wipe these smiles off y'all faces. Y'all got to take these glows away from y'all. <laughs> turn it off! You in this, you in this, brother D. <laughs> all right, this is what's up. You can put anything up there. All right, let me go on. Uh, psychological abuse, financial abuse of elders. Elder Doug. He's an oppressive financial stickler, isn't he? Just uh, they sign over their SS checks. Social Security, only one problem. We ain't got nobody here old enough to collect Social Security. <laughs> Anybody here collecting Social Security? Uh, make sure you got that camera panning around, Sister Vicky. You too, Brother, brother Victor. Go, go on, pan around. Everybody raise your hand that this, this, this on, this, uh, you sign your Social Security check over to Elder Doug or Pastor Dow. Somebody lying. But yet it's still out there. We go on. Huh. To the pastor, they sign it over to the pastor every month. People are told that if they leave, they're going to hell. I ain't got no heaven to hell putting nobody in. You ever seen somebody leave here and then they went straight to hell? <laughs> no, nah, for real, man. We talking about real assertions here. Damn, if hell is outside that gate, boy, we better not ever leave. <laughs> and all kinds of bad things will happen to them. If you leave the ministry, you are leaving God. Well, that's a true assertion, though. You know what I mean? All right, so let's test these allegations asserted against me in a negative light to compare this 
to the teachings of Jesus. Wouldn't that be a fair assessment? Wouldn't that be fair? Now, nah, let's just do that, all right? Now, I actually didn't start this message off like this, but as I was nearing the end of it, I said, let me Google this thing here for a second, see what's going on here, you know what I mean? Because I got all these hypocrites that don't live nothing, that don't obey nothing, looking like prostitutes and whores, whoremongers looking just like the world, don't keep one commandment, don't obey y'all for nothing, and they fancy themselves as our judges. So let's prove this thing. It says these are avant Christians. Got to be. Got to be. They got to be the most dedicated of the dedicated to levy these kind of charges. They got to be living a life. Isn't that right? So we know that 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says what? Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. That's what we're going to do, all right? All right. So here is a picture for the ignorant folks out there to see what they assert is a cult. Out of every nation, every tongue, every tribe, every creed. So we're not just a black cult. Amazing, huh? Everyone who believes these false assertions, or anyone who believes these false assertions, I would like to see if their life is more dedicated and obedient to Jesus than we do. We who are now, we who are now that are, that we are born again. Ariel, did you do that, son? Anyway, we who are now born again, put it like that. We're going to let the scripture speak, all right? It's a very painful thing. It's a very, very painful thing to experience your natural family reject you when you're born again. Now, Yahweh says that his sheep always does what? He said his sheep always does what? Now, John 10, 27, my sheep. And he's talking about sheep referring to mankind. In a generic form, meaning male and female. Not physical sheep. But my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The key is, he knows them. You hear that? It's not where you go around and you blast out how much you know y'all and how much you love y'all. The real question is, is does he know you? Is that all right? Does he know you? All right. And they follow me. I promise you that these people who made these assertions don't follow him. I guarantee they follow their own dictates and mandates of their own mind. The most high comes first. Always. Now, Mark 12, 30. And you shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. When you get finished with all that, there ain't nothing else left. Huh? This is the first commandment. Natural family versus spiritual family. John 3, 1. There was a man of a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Yehudim. That means Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Teacher, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher that come from Yah, for no man can do these miracles. For no man can do these that you do except y'all be with him. So y'all must be with us too then. I mean, he with y'all sure, but y'all's got to be with us then too, right? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, truly, truly I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's a logical question. Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter 
into the kingdom of Yahweh. And I submit to you today that people don't mind getting water baptized, but they don't want nothing to do with this spiritual baptism. Think about that. Yahshua goes on to say and says, that which is born of flesh is, and that which is born of spirit is. And by the way, both of these are the same Greek words. Just because you see one capitalized and the other one's not capitalized, all right? Flesh, the natural spirit from Yah. John 3, 7. Marvel not that I said unto you that you must be born again or born from above. Let me stop right there for a second. <clears throat> we all have been through, those of us that are here, we've all been through the transition where our natural families were very familiar with the way that we used to carry ourselves. Our character and nature then, they still see the same silhouette. They see the same structure, the same frame that they can identify naturally with their eyes when they see you, fleshly, the person. Is that right? They know something has trans, something has changed. Something has greatly happened because even though while I'm looking at the same person, that person don't talk the same. Sounds like the same person. But there's something different about that person. You understand what I mean? Then all of a sudden you start to watch all this visceralness against you. The attitudes. You start watching the changes. Uh, whereas before if you rip and ran the streets, stayed out all night, nobody knew where you was. If you smoked dope, if you did crack, meth, shot up, who cares? You got drunk. If you are a whoremonger or adulterer, them same people, they tolerated you and you tolerated them because you both were in the same condition. You both were in the same condition. But however, when you stop doing them things, and you lay claims that you have been born from above or born again. You really truly don't have to preach it to them. All you have to do is just be in their presence and they'll see your lifestyle. That's it. That's it. That's it. All of a sudden what happens is, is that the things you used to do, you hate. You no longer do that. You no longer go to the same excess or riotous of living. But they still see the same person. That they can identify with, but they know something is gravely different. They told me, we want the old Chucky back. I said, he's dead and gone. He ain't coming back. <laughs> You'll never see him again. Well, we don't like this new one. Oh, you don't like the renewed one. And there's only one reason why they don't like the new one. Because, see, once you're born again, born from above. And you're no longer a participating in the previous life and that lifestyle. There's a condemnation that comes up on those that are still yet in darkness. Are you following? And they begin to feel uncomfortable and feel very condemned when your presence is around. Before you could have been the life of the party. When they seen Delano come, hey, he's coming. Now they don't want you to come. You get it? Because there's something that is taking, taking place. It can't be seen with the natural eye, but it can be perceived by the mind. While you look like the same person, you are not the same person. And they know it. You get it? Now your very presence brings a condemnation to them. And that is what they're fighting against more than anything. They're fighting against the renewed Holy Spirit or the spirit that's in you. The old man that they were familiar with is dead and gone. The new man is now alive. Now at times, they'll be the first ones to pounce all over you if you slip. Because they'll, they'll call you, oh, you some kind of holy roller now. Well, yes, I am. I'm living. 
sanctified, set apart is, is all that I can. And I'm growing in this. And they'll be the first one to point that finger at you if you slip in the most minutest detail. They'll be your greatest judges. And what they're trying to do is bring back the old man. Trying to tell you, you can't do this. You can't live this. And yet and still, you continue to keep going and you continue to keep overcoming. And you continue to keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And as they sit there in the seat of judgment, year after year, let's start off day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, they continue to keep seeing this transformation. You get it? It won't be too long that they'll be glad that you are out of their presence. They're already talking about you, you just don't know it. You remember how you used to pick up the telephone and talk about everybody? Now they're talking about you. You just don't know it. Watch the look of disdain on them when you come around. Watch the spirit, the spiritual atmosphere change when you come around. Hmm? It's like they can't tolerate you being happy because they say it. Think about this. This is real, real living. Yahshua clearly tells us his mind concerning family. Who is your mother and who are your brothers according to the Messiah? See, because naturally we all have family we can relate to. But the Messiah had a total different perspective and a total different point of view. He saw things out of a different lens than people do in this world. So let's read the words. Over in Matthew, the 12th chapter, verse 46, it says, And while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren, they stood where? Without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Look, your mother and your brethren stand without desiring to speak to you. But he answered and he said unto him that told him, who is my mother? Now, I'm, I'm telling you right now, he's trying to get you to think. See, because you're telling me that my mother and my brother's outside and they want to speak to me. But my question to you, Yahshua says, who is my mother? He's talking to the people that are around him that can hear him. And he says, who is or who are my brother? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples. Disciples mean taught ones. Mind you, he's talking to people, but he has these disciples that follow him. He asked them, who is my mother? <coughs> who are my brethren? Stretch forth his hands over here, not to the people he's talking to. Y'all get it? <clears throat> because he is not yet, none of these people are not yet disciples. So he stretched forth his hand to a group of people. Not the ones that are without, not the ones that are listening to him. He stretched forth his hands to his top ones, to his disciples, the ones that follow him. And the whole idea is, is hoping that you would be disciples. All right? And said, here are my mother and my for whosoever shall do the will. That's what we're running short on in America. Is a lot of doing the will of the Father. Which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother. Now the question is stand has to be asked. Got to be asked. Does your natural family do the will of the Father? <coughs> Y'all sure would have. <coughs> Y'all sure would have said they ain't mine. True. They're not my mother. They're not my brother. They're not my sister. That's what Y'all sure would have said. 
Are y'all hearing me out there? If they don't do the will of the Father, Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep or guard my commandments. That's what he said. The same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. So do the people that you formerly know as natural family members, do they do the will of the Father? After we hear what Yahshua has to say, would they even be considered as his disciples? Just because the world asserts mental assent does not mean that they belong to him. There must be a reckoning coming. There must be a doing in all this. That's what he says. So what is the will of Yahweh? First Thessalonians 4, 3 says, for this is the will of Yah, even your sanctification. That sanctification means set apartness. That you should abstain from fornication. That fornication means idolatry. Idolatry. Gnosticism like throwing in all the sex stuff. When you live godly, the book says something about that. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer, what? And where does that persecution usually come first? Your own natural family. See, even your walk proves that you're born anew, that you're born again. You understand what I mean? If the devil ever try to come and tempt you, if, if you're still a disciple or not, pay attention to how the people around you treat you. If you are still born of this world and of this world, then the world will love its own. Anybody hear it? What will you receive or what you will receive now and a hundredfold in the kingdom? Matthew 19, 27 says, And then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken, forsaken all. That's what Peter and him said, right? Y'all yeah. know how the story. He saw one fishing and come follow me. Yeah. He didn't lay it all out for him. He just said, come follow me. Yeah. One of them was collecting taxes. Come follow me. Yeah. Come follow me. They just have to be him. Come follow me. He didn't lay it all out for him. He didn't give him a promise of roses or draw the contract and agreement. All he just said, come follow me. Uh-oh. Well, so now they have followed him. They got questions too. So we have forsaken all. And followed you. What shall we have there for? And Jesus said unto them, truly I say unto you that you which have followed me in this regeneration... And that word regeneration means rebirth. Yeah? A spiritual renovation. A restoration. Regeneration. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his what? Glory. Ye shall sit upon the twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now mind you. Perfect context. He's only talking to the twelve disciples. He ain't talking to us right now. So don't you think you're going to be sitting on the thrones in Israel judging the 12 tribes? No, you ain't. Don't get happy. You already got your mama petitioning. Let my son sit on your left or right. <laughs> I mean, you can be happy going to the kingdom, but you ain't getting that seat. I, you see the reason why I stopped y'all? Because y'all thought it was you. If I let you run on it, boy, you're excited now. Hey! <laughs> He's going to get to us. And then he says, and everyone. Now that's us. Now you can rejoice. <laughs> See, you're not left out. 
and everyone that here's a prerequisite though. Because this, this faith, this work, this walk is all about doing something. It ain't mental sin. It's about doing. He says, and everyone that has forsaken what? Does Christians do that? Does so-called Hebrew Israelites do that? Does the Messianics do that? Do the Hebrew roots do that? They don't. We're the only ministry that I know of in America that preaches that. I said the only ones that I know of. You want to think of other people doing that, they should know me right now because, I mean, I'm pretty damn popular. Can't hardly go nowhere in the world without somebody, hey! No wonder I wear sunglasses everywhere. Still don't work. They know how I look with my eyes. But y'all still said, and everyone that had forsaken houses, brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Now, you ain't going to get nobody in other congregations standing up and clapping their hands because they ain't doing it. They don't see it. They ain't trying it. <clears throat> Brother Ron, up there in the Saints in Clarksville, Pastor Dow is proud of y'all because they're, they're doing it. They are literally doing it. They have, they have done met their goal two months, two and a half months prior, and now they already done set another goal. As the old saying going to the military, they're moving out and drawing fire. They're doing it. <laughs> Brother Toby and them do it. Brother Toby said, boy, if people knew how hard this work was. <laughs> is it not hard work, brother? It is hard. Now, again, and everyone that hath forsaken. Houses, brothers, sisters, fathers, mother, wife, children, lands for my name's sake. Shall receive what? And then do what? But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be what? And then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. We're going to Mark, another count, 10, 28. And Jesus answered, the reason why I'm throwing this in there, because when you have two different accounts, two different stories are being told based on the way they hear it, right? And Jesus answered, said, Verily I say unto you, that no man that hath left house or brother or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the message, the gospel, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Now, your family is still in bondage to the world. What we preach and teach by following this word right here, it gets us out of bondage from the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We pray that we live a quiet and peaceful life. We get a hell of a lot more peace we get away from you. And you'll get peace too. But you're going to receive a hundredfold now and this time, houses. And brothers and sisters, I always miss the I was like, where happened to wives? Everything else is plural, but where happened to wife in this one? Because I know I went back, I know it said wives, right? And why, why is it struck out of here? There's that wicked monoligamy. Wicked, wicked feminine. Every monoligamous society is ran by feminists. I mean, to be a patriarch, is, it only means father rules. I, anyway, sisters and mothers and children and lands and with what? Persecution. With? Persecution. And in the world to come, what? Now, that right there is letting you know that you are really truly a disciple. You know how hard it is to give up something? Huh? 
And the people out there, well, now shut up. You don't know how hard to give up. You ain't gave up nothing. You get it? Now y'all see the reason why I'm telling people ain't going to come behind this? But many that are first shall be what? And the last shall be what? So how did the assembly understand the words of Christ and the teachings of the apostles? You know, because after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah, the apostles understood clearly because he ministered them. He gave them a message. The Bible said that he was seen by the disciples many, many days. By infallible proofs he was. Preaching and teaching things concerning the kingdom of Yah. So you know they carried on the message. How do we know what he preached? How do we know what he taught? Well, pay attention to the disciples, the apostles, the taught ones. And what do they teach? Acts 2.42. And they continue steadfast in the apostles' what? That means their teachings. And fellowship. But most of you don't want fellowship. You can't stand being around each other. You can't stand being around yourself. Did I say something wrong, man? I know I did say something wrong. Some people can't even enjoy their own company. They get mad at themselves. Start tearing up everything and... And then when they can't get enough of themselves, they can't wait to bite off somebody else's head when they come around. You know what the Bible does talk about bite and devour one another. That was a funny. Anyway, we'll, we'll get on back to the message because some of you are taking it personal. <laughs> and anyway, they continue steadfast in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, breaking the bread. And in some of you ain't doing that either. <clears throat> and fear. That's some serious teaching. That's some serious teaching where you can get fear to come up on people. Y'all think about that now. Everybody want to hear some teaching. They want to cut a Holy Ghost rug and do a dance. But their teaching is bought about fear. Came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believe were to yes. and had all things. Uh -huh. They go, your cult teaching. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Now the world and those religious people out there, they take us on the chin for the way that we live. And all we're doing is following the teachings. How are you going to condemn that? See, when you're really truly born again, renewed, your mindset, everything changes when you, in, in the world, you had desires and ambition, you were heading a certain way. But when you really, truly be, become born again, born anew, you find out that you ain't trying to build an eternal kingdom here on this earth. The things that used to shine and all had glitter and glance and gold and, and what they call it, pomp and whatever else, that don't mean nothing to you no more. So this Carol used to have to get on me to go wash the car. Before being born again, you know how it is, man. You wash the car, get the rims all nice and stuff, turn up the music, let down the windows, and roll down the road. You look around, make sure everybody's looking at you. You come born again, you don't give a damn how much dirt on the car. I'm studying. I'm fasting. I'm too tired to wash it. I'm praying. Damn, it's getting you to and fro. What the hell you care what the car look like now? I'm just telling you my real life experience. She was right though, honey. At least wash the car. I'll go out there. All right, good is good. <laughs> Putting all that time in just so you can roll down the road a half a mile and it's all dirty again. I must be just talking about me. Amen. Is anybody going with me, man? I, I understand y'all won't leave me by myself, man. Let me be crucified, man. But somebody, somebody here understand what I'm saying. Huh? Can somebody relate? Anybody relate? Anybody ever been there before? When the car was dirty. 
You didn't care. You had your mind elsewhere. It didn't mean what it used to mean like it did before. Because you were too busy spending your time with the Holy Ghost on the floor. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all right? And all that believe were together and had all things common. Common. And sold their possession. Did they, didn't they just take cheat, take it on to me? Cult teachings. Cult teachings of Jesus. And look at these, these occult or cult disciples. They just happened to be following him. And they preaching and teaching was so fearful, it made people, they got it. To sell their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, not from the church of Christ to the Baptist. From house to house. And they eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising Yah. And having favor with all the people and the Messiah added to the assembly daily, such as should be what? <coughs> Acts 4, verse 29. See what I'm talking about? Would this not be considered cult teachers that we follow the philosophies of today? Would it not be? Hmm? As soon as you start obeying the Bible, the first thing this unregenerated, wicked generation thinks about is Jim Jones. Or Waco. One person ended up killing somebody. The government ended up killing Waco. The Brent's Davidians. And so Satan, he raises up things like this and does stuff like this. So that if any of you ever get an ideal in your mind to follow these teachings, this was coming to you. And so everybody becomes a bunch of chicken shits. You can live for government, live for man, and obey everything, but can't live for Yah. Now, the book says, whomsoever you yield your member servants to obey, that's who servants you are. Now, I'm serious. You talk about the way we talking right here, reading this book, line up on line, precept on precept, following this thing the way it is. Would not the early assembly, as well as Jesus himself, <coughs> would be considered a cult leader? This is bizarre. <clears throat> Ain't it? A cult leader. And now, Master, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all what? They try to say we're arrogant for being bold. Don't get it mixed up. It takes boldness to do this. Uh huh. The wicked flee when no man pursue, but the righteous eye is what? Bold. Bold as a lion. That they may speak your word. I mean, look at how many, how many preachers talk like your pastor. Get out there, come on, line them up. How many talk like me? No reason why they can't, because they don't live like me. They that preach the gospel must. There's a power behind living it. A total different speech and a total different cadence. Comprehend? Yes, sir. Capiche? Yes, sir. In what they do? By stretching forth thy hands to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Ruach HaKadosh. Or they all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spake the word of Yah with boldness. And the multitudes of them that believed were of 
one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that all the things which he possessed was his, but they had all things, the occult teachings of the disciples of Jesus. See what else comes on this. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the master Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Great favor was upon them all. Grace means favor. Great favor was upon them all. And neither was there any among them that lacked. Does anybody here lack anything? Hmm. For as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them and bought the price of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had what? And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas which is being interpreted a son of consolation of Levite and of the country of Cyprus. Having land, sold it, bought their money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. The occult teachings of your Bible. I don't care. Get the Revised Standard Version. Get the New Revised Standard Version. Get the New King James Version. Get the New International Version. Get the American Standard Version. Get the King James Version. Get whatever version you want. They all still say it. As joint heirs, you will suffer with him and be glorified with him. How you know that? Romans 8, 17. And if children then heirs, heirs of Yah, and joint heirs with Messiah, if so be that we do what? Suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. How you think that people can do this stuff with boldness when they know in whom they believe? How you think, why you think I don't care about what this world says? Huh? And you shouldn't either. I care about him. Hallelujah. So if people are persecuting me, putting me on Google, making up all kinds of fact. Families against whatever the hell it is. Cult teachings. I mean, man, I expect that. Woe unto you when men speak well of you. I don't expect unregenerated man to speak well of me. Huh? They do talk well of false prophets, though. Don't they speak well of T.D. Jakes? Joe Osteen? Speak well of Jesse Duplantis? Don't they speak well of all of these people? Not me. I bet they ain't got half the stuff on the internet that I got, and I'm, I'm just a Johnny come lately. You know the reason why we get the persecution? Because of the impact we're making. Hard to ignore. Because somebody is obeying y'all. You know, it's going to be amazing because, just like this, this, this says right here, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. <clears throat> when we get... Finish with this little pathetic life. We're going to be in the kingdom and looking back on this and thank Yah that he gave us strength. Yeah. Huh? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. To actually go against wind and tide. To stand in the face of adversity. Huh? And not deny him for nothing. What a day that's going to be. When my Jesus I will see. When I look upon his face. There to sing about his grace. When he takes me by the hand 
and lead me to the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Hallelujah. <laughs> I had somebody send me an email and say, why are you always singing? Because I got joy. Mary Hart do it good like a medicine. But a broken spirit drive the bones. I got a song. I don't really need a radio. I can sing. Hallelujah. The importance of receiving a godly man. Oh, see, there you are. This way, here it comes. That's what we've been waiting on, the punchline. Matthew 10, verse 12. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if that house be worthy of your peace, <clears throat> come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return unto you. And whosoever shall not receive you. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's serious. In other words, people in some serious trouble if they don't receive you. Because you're not preaching your... You're preaching him. Whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, will you depart out of that house of this city, shake the dust off your feet. For verily I say to you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And here it is again. It's a famous statement in the day. And he that findeth his life <laughs> shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall do what? Find it. And watch this. And he that receiveth you receiveth me. See, the only reason why you're sitting here and the only reason why you're out there on the other side of that camera is because you received me. Hallelujah. That's it. Yes, sir. You receive me and believe the things that I'm saying. Yes, sir. And in that, you're looking at the fruit, if it really truly is the message, yes. of the good news. So you get to benefit from his message. You get it? You go receive somebody else, you're going to find out if you got the fruit. Uh-oh. He that received you received me, and he that received me received him that sent me. So who is your brother according to Christ? Now we're going to go to Mark. We did Matthew, right? <laughs> 331, then it came. There came then his brother and his mother standing without. Same account, but something a little bit different. Calling unto him. And the multitude said about him and said unto him, Behold thy mother and thy brethren without seek for you. And he answered and saying, Who is my mother and my brother? And they looked around about on them which had sat about him and said, Behold, my mother, my brother, for whosoever does do the will of Yah, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. That's the same thing, really. Called and chosen. Called and chosen. Jeremiah 3.14, Turn, O backside and children, say of Yahweh, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family. When you see these people coming at the feast, man, you're not seeing many people coming from these cities. You hear this? That's what he says. If you are really truly his child, he's going to take you one of a city and two of a family. Well, I'm waiting for which one of my family live and you'll find out if one I'm gone. Save yourself. You don't get to pick and choose which one come. But he said, I'm going to take you one of a city and two of a family and will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors. Everybody said, I don't like him. I don't like how he talks. I don't like how he cusses. Not more than you do. Just that you're a hypocrite and I ain't. And they don't even know what cursing is anyway. They curse y'all every day. But not even keeping his commandments, making light of him. Huh? And I'll give you pastors. Notice. This is the father giving the what? Pastor. You don't get to pick and choose which one it is. So when you say, I don't like him, like ain't got nothing to do with it. Love me. I ain't loving you. Go to hell then. See, he putting somebody in hell. 
I just told you where to go because that's where you're going. Which one of y'all, when you had a brother or sister and they came on the scene, you said, Mama, put them back. I don't want them no more. <laughs> huh? Mama, put them back. I don't want them no more. They messing up my role. I mean, think about it, man. Child get a bad rap, man. He, you been here three years and this brand new one come. And all you are is a slave to it. Bring me the diaper bag. <laughs> Bring me them clothes. Throw this in a trash can. You might got to throw away his shit too, mama. <laughs> I mean, I see all the perspectives, man. I see it from all angles. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I will give you pastors according to my heart. Y whose heart is that? Your heart or y'all's heart? So well, world, whether you like it or not, you're looking at the best thing going today. Whoa! And see, and they think I'm talking about me, though. He is the giver of every good gift. Because of every good gift come from above. Of the Father. I just happen to be in a role. What do you want me to do, be a pastor and not do my role to suit you? You ain't going to judge me. He is. He going to judge me based on how I perform my role. That's why we can have a church and we don't have to take up an offering plate. There ain't, there ain't no offering plate passed around. We don't have to do that. Because y'all love a cheerful giver. You, you damn to bring out an offering plate in Christianity because ain't nobody giving cheerfully. Man, look. <laughs> they, ain't, they, ain't giving, they ain't giving cheerfully. You're giving grudgingly. Especially when that plate gets passed around for the third time. Why you think nobody don't want to come to church? <laughs> you taking all their dollar bills. <laughs> Somebody said to me, Pastor, why don't you take up our said Because you don't have to do that with y'all's people. Y'all's people are going to obey him. And I'll give you a pass according to my heart, which shall feed you with what? Knowledge. So my job is to feed you with knowledge, knowledge and what? Knowledge. That's my job. Y'all don't have to do my job, do you? Okay, good. Thank you very much. I'm glad I got your approval. <laughs> Matthew 22, 14. For many, that are, for many are called, but few are what? People will speak evil of you, but let your life be an example of your words. Listen to how Peter addressed this. First Peter chapter 3, verse 16. Having your conversation, having a good conversation, that whereas they speak what? Evil, evil of you. I keep telling you, the evil they're going to be speaking, it's going to, your family going to talk evil of. You already know it. You're just an object of scorn when they come around. Now, I'm really, they get on a telephone and run you down. And they have no understanding. Because they have no shepherd. They don't have one. And they'll run you down. And then when you come, they, they just tolerate you. They do. That's your family. We are family. Now we are. I was telling all the saints up in Canada, I said, isn't that something? I'll get in this thing and drive 800, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> 878 miles. To go visit my family up in the northern tribes of Israel. And I won't even drive 60 miles to go and visit one of these damn blasphemers. Yes, sir. Won't do it. Got no reason for it. They the one chosen. 
I'm just making sure that the deal is cut. Beside that, I wouldn't know where to go anyway. I know they that way. <laughs> That's about it. Let's just tell the truth. My natural family don't give a damn about me, and I don't give a damn about them. It has mutual respect. They should thank y'all I don't come around. Simple. <laughs> That's real talk. So anyway, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, accuse your good conversation in Messiah. For it is better if the will of Yah be so that ye suffer for well doing than for what? Evil doing. Y'all get that? This is real talk, saints. I love you, but I don't love your family. Sorry. Don't get mad at me. Now, if your family, I've seen some family. I, I still, them two right there, Angelica and Scott, man, it just don't make sense, man. I, I, I see exactly what the book says. When it says make friends with un unrighteous mammon, their, their family has been, they, they stick out like a light bulb. I mean, a, a, an LED with 30,000 luminous, a beam. They come here, his mom and dad don't believe shit. Straight up, science, no, they don't believe in nothing. What do they believe in, Scott? Science. They believe in science. Boom! Here we are. Love him, love the grandchildren. They come here, don't believe in Jesus, don't believe in nothing other ways, and are the most honorable and the most respectful. I mean, when we see them coming, we go run to them to go hug them. Now they're still going to hell. Not by my mission. They buy us pizza. I mean, that's a deal breaker right there. <laughs> and leave an offering. When his mother comes, she has a head covering on. She wears a dress because she honors our traditions. But your nasty, raunchy family with a funky ass. You think I'm going to let them come here and mess up our land? Hell no. I'll just tell my wife. I said, you know, one day my mother and father are going to pass away. I said, they can come to the, they can come to the burial, but they're going to have their ass right out there on that damn road. Because as soon as they step one damn foot on that blade of grass, we're going to stop from a funeral to, to a damn uh, uh, MMA. <laughs> and they know me. I mean exactly what I say. I'll leave from preaching Preaching a, a burial like that and going into straight beast mode. I didn't choose that. They did. The way they dishonored and disrespected me and this community right here. Hell no. So here it is. Now what people would do is say, look at him. Well, why are you always capitalizing on my response rather than the attack that we receive? Sorry, we ain't you passive Christians. I believe in turn the other cheek. I believe it better than you do. Slap me on my cheek and see what I do. <laughs> my brother got the same philosophy. How in the hell is Israel going to be warriors? Then all of a sudden when Jesus comes with a bunch of pacifists. Rolling around with candle vigils. Singing kumbaya. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? You ain't gonna get no warrior to bite off on nothing like that. Where were we at? You got me stirred up. <laughs> oh, his family. I'm, and, and, and his wife's family. Same thing. They Catholics. Ain't they Catholics, Angelica? 
just so honorable. See, they got Tupac going anyway because they used to wear head covers and dress and stuff. Just honorable people. They buy us pizza. <laughs> we love when they come. We know it's a guaranteed pizza. <laughs> they give us offerings. I'm serious, man. Them two. It's like, and then what about all you, 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 your people? They grew up in the Baptist church. They Pentecostals. They don't give a damn about nobody but themselves. But they selfish. And you want us to actually accommodate you? Ain't no way. <clears throat> we wouldn't go to your home and mess it up. Well, when you come to my house, you're going to buy by my rules. That ain't no big deal. See, our laws are higher than your rules. So we would never defy them. Now, if you tell me that I got to run around in booty shorts to come over to your house, I won't be coming. I mean, that's how wicked for is. They'll do stuff like that just to be vindictive. Yeah. No, for real, antagonistic, just to be doing it. Anyway, how did the early church slash assembly, how, how, how did they meet? How did they do things? Well, let's look at this again, because we have home fellowships all across this land. Home fellowships that they're busting at the seams. Hmm? You know, it's a sad thing. We, you know, Houston is one of the biggest assemblies, one of them. And Brother Greg told a brother to tell the people where to park the cars at because they live in a housing community. And there's about 70-something people that come to assembly every Sabbath. And that one brother couldn't obey that one order that Brother Greg gave him. Now, can't nobody come to the housing community no more. And they all got to go and pay money every week now to meet at a place that they rent in order to have service. All because of one damn disobedient, rebellious, stubborn Israelite. Now they got to pay money out of their pockets. They, they could be putting in Israel, putting back. Just so the saints can get together me because one person, just one man, just couldn't obey. One order. Now look, we got to pay. Isn't that sad? Obedience is better than what? And the hearken is better than the what? Fat of rams. What's so hard about obeying? It ain't going to hurt you. But your disobedience, look what it's going to cost us. Look what it's going to cost us now. So if I was to go down there and fly down there and, and visit the, 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 the saints in Texas, I won't even be sitting in the place where we need to be, which is in the house. I'll be sitting there in the evening time. So you can be more personal when you're in the house. You know what I mean? People don't, out in the public, they don't like his deliverance. Now, I, done, I used to do deliverance in hotel rooms where I go and be, it, it turned that place upside down. Soon as somebody turn around and see somebody growling and stuff, they get up and hit the door. <laughs> and they hit the door and they, I mean, they be running, man. I'm talking on the back of heels. <laughs> they getting out of the area of operation. They see this stuff, they're like, uh uh, I'm out. Then them religious people, Jesus, cover me, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus ain't thinking about you right now. Jesus, get this demon out of this person. <laughs> but y'all see how real this thing is? Well, look how early this image did. Acts chapter 8, verse 3. For Saul, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church. Entering into every what? House. And hailing men and women committed them to what? First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 19. Watch this. The theme is the same. And the churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Messiah. With the Church or the assembly that is in their what? House. Somebody said, well, I see y'all building a big old church building. No, it ain't. That's our living room. We, we got to get a, a bigger living room. You ain't going to come on this place and see one place that says church. Anybody ever seen a sign say church? Church. 
We just had to build a bigger living room. Because we're on our own land. In our own house. Now look at them. So where was the assembly at? In the house. Colossians chapter 4 verse 15. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphus and the church which is in his Where's the church at? In the house. Where y'all going? There? What y'all doing? What y'all doing out there? You think you're doing something by getting up, putting on your Sunday best. You put perfume over stink, you still stink. Wash your behind and brush your teeth. Brother Allen say, go ahead. He know this is how folk do in church, man. Coming up in church with booze breath in the morning. Yeah, sucking out all that Boone Farm. Yeah, I mock you. Bunch of devils. I mean, that's how Satan is trying to package as the house of Israel. That ain't it. The assembly in the house. Look, there will be those who come to you and have a good testimony and fall away. Watch this. Colossians 4, 14. Luke, the beloved physician and Demas greet you. Watch this. Notice, that's over in Colossians 4, 14, right? Look what happens to Demas. 2 Timothy 4, chapter 4, verse 10. For Demas have forsaken what? He didn't say he forsaken the Lord. He forsake who? That's, that's, that's Paul writing to Timothy. You follow me? He said, look, man, demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world. And is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans, Galatians, Titus, to Dalmatia. Isn't that something? There will be those who rise up against authority in the assembly. Third John. One nine. I wrote unto the church but the upper trees who love to have the preeminence, love to be first. Among them, here it is the key, look, receiveth us not. This is an apostle right here. Receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, what is his deed? Priding against us with malicious words and not content therewith. Neither doeth he himself receive the what? Brethren, and forbid them that would and cast them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. And he that doeth good is of he that doeth good is a, yeah. but he that doeth evil have not seen Yah. So just by me just doing good and long, I'm of Yah. Man, we're playing this tune today, ain't we? Huh? Stay the course, of Israel. Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near with a full heart, a true heart. In full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Why? Because a double minded person is what? Unstable in what? All his ways. So hold fast without wavering, for he that is faithful that he promised. For he is faithful that promised, and let us. Consider one another to provoke unto love and to good what? Get off your lazy ass and do something. Well, Pastor, why you got to talk so common like that? Because you uncommon. Some of you, we got to literally just lay into you just to even get you to give a lending, uh, just a helping hand. We're provoking you to good works. Oh, hallelujah. Not Forsaken the assembly of ourselves together. 
If I lived up in Canada, you, you couldn't keep me from assembling with them brothers. I'd be like, even if they don't want to assemble with each other, I'd go to each one of them house on, 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 pick a Sabbath. Hey, coming, brother. Well, we, 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 we rested this Sabbath. I'd be over there to rest with you. You're going to have a restful time. <laughs> That's provoking the good works. Yes, That's considering one another. That's provoking one another. Ah. Yeah, it is. Why? I'm obeying. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. The day of the Most High. Your greatest foes will be your own family. Get it through your thick head. Oh, his family too. They trip too, man. They come here just as honorable. I don't get it, man. My family ain't nothing but a nation's of bastards. Why they got to be so damn uncouth? Why y'all get all the good families, man? And my, y'all get nothing but piss and crap, man, huh? What's the big deal? What am I doing wrong, man? Huh? What am I doing wrong? Lay it out. If I need to repent, I'll repent. Matthew 10, 34. Think not. And that don't mean that you just <laughs> shut your mind down. <laughs> that I'm coming to send peace on earth. The Messiah said, don't even let it enter into your mind that I'm coming to send peace. See, you, you people got this. This Jesus y'all be creating, is, it's, he's utterly amazing to me. He got halos. He got little lambs lying around. and I'm like, yeah, he, got, he, he even got peace signs. <laughs> and depending on which culture he got, he black, he got them. He Latino, man, he got a big doobie in his mouth. He white, look like a faggot. That's real talk. Chinese, whatever, look like Buddha. Everybody be painting Christ their way. But this, the real Messiah said, if you th don't think I come to sin peace, in other words, when I come, basically I come to raise hell. And I am raising it. Now, if I'm going to raise it so much, I'm going to take the keys of it. And then I'm going to give the keys to the kingdom to the saints. And then they're going to raise hell. High glory to the king. This is good preaching. This is good preaching. I bet all the roof was about to bust out there in Georgia, man. This is good preaching. I came not to send peace but a sword. You may know what a sword is. Sword? Sword? Isn't that militant? That's ultimate cult teaching. See, if it was legal for us to carry these around and there was no firearms, guess what we all be having on us? I mean, didn't one of the disciples sit and cut the ear off of somebody in the garden of Gethsemane? Where'd he get that sword from? Did Jesus disarm him and tell him he got to submit to the government? You sure? He didn't do that. Did he, did he tell him to go turn it in? Get the paperwork. <laughs> no, he didn't. He told him just put it back in his place. Yeah, put it in his place. Because what you're doing, this, what, right now what I'm doing, you're trying to circumvent and prevent what the Most High has for the plan. I, I, come on, we don't need to be doing this fight. Not like that right now. That time is coming. Hallelujah. And you can tell Israel history has always been that time. Gee. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and her daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. There's a lot of division in there, isn't it? That is Jesus. The real Jesus. He said, I come to separate, sever, cut, and
and divide. The first place is I'm coming to rip up the family. Say that's real teaching. Go read it for yourself. Say that's the real Jesus. Anybody ever heard that one before? And a man's foes, enemy, those that oppose him, shall be they of his own household. He that love a father and mother more than me is not worthy. I mean, that, that is straight up cult teaching right there. See, he means it. Nobody but me. He's that, he, he, sorry, but it's okay for Jesus to be self-centered, yeah. self-focused, yeah. and self-absorbed. And the church said hallelujah. Because we agree. Yeah, we be going, yeah, that's the king right there. Yeah, that's him. That him. Look at him. Look at him. Don't he look good? Look at him. He's doing his thing. You know the reason why we, we, we don't have no problem doing that? Because in the kingdom, we're going to be ruling. We're going to have servants and handmaidens too. We're going to be ruling, man. We're going to be ruling over angels. You ain't got to be the king. Just be a governor of a providence. And support the king. There's going to be some when everything flips on this earth, isn't it? Yeah, it's, going, it's getting ready to flip here for a thousand years. So it's, it's getting ready to flip. It's going to flip hard too. You better make sure, boy, if you make it, and boy, if you barely make, you make it, you better hope you ain't in my providence and you wicked. There's going to be some of you left alive. And you're going to line up. You know, oh, hey, it's going to be something else. Oh, I better stop because you know, they, they don't ever hit his side of it. They always preach the fairy tales. Hmm? They do. They preach the fairy tales, man. He that love a father more than more than me is not worthy of me, and he that love a son or daughter more than me is not what? Worthy of me. Now you tell me they ain't considered cult teachers today. If you follow the sentiments of this world, tell me they ain't considered cult teachings. Now you see the reason why religion, these fools, make a mockery of the way. And he that taketh not his cross and fall after me is not worthy of me. And he that findeth his life seems to be the theme, don't it? Shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. And here we go again. And he that receiveth you. See, it's important for y'all rebellious people out there, instead of sitting over there getting mad like a junkyard dog, it's very important that y'all receive me instead of come over here spying on our liberty. Filling up your cup. You probably don't know what that means. In other words, you're filling up your cup, the measure of it, to the fullness, so that when you do end up burning, it's just. See, people don't even know that you're not over here to sit and spound. You're over here to get saved. You're over here to get your name written down. But you're letting the enemy fool you. Somebody says, I don't like the way he talks. I don't like how you look. We had a dilemma then, ain't we? I don't like looking at ugly people. It's oppressive. Give me a nervous disorder. What made people look ugly? You ever seen, you ever seen a face like you? You ever seen like You don't look beautiful like that. That's how people, they, 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 they don't hide either. They'll look at me. I look at them and go, <laughs> Getting that spirit. The receiving is very important. He that receiveth you, receiving me, and he that receiveth me, receiving him that sent me. In other words, Jesus ain't coming down here and preaching his gospel. He already been here to do that. He done delegated it to his real, true disciples. And we still here after two thousand years. We still here. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? John 4.23, 
But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yah's a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You got to be born again. Last scripture of the day is a very impactful one. Or let's say the last, well, we're going to use the last phrase of one of Paul's letters that he wrote to the Romans. That way we'd be more defined or more definitive. Which one is it? Which, which, what's proper English, man? Definitive? Definitive. Okay, Scott approved. Definitive. That sells it. There you have it. Democracy in action. That's it. <laughs> Romans 8, 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be, that the spirit of Yah dwell in you. And you don't get the spirit of Yah by reading the commandments either and keeping these laws. No, you don't. Uh-uh. This is something that's got to take place in heaven, and only Yah can give it to you. Only Yah can give it to you. That's why it says in John 7, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Receive it, receive it, receive it. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of Yah dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Remember, we all bought purchased possessions. We've been, literally, we've been paid for. We're bond servants. Hmm? We're the clay and he's the potter. He molded and shaped us the way he wants us to be. Not the way we want to be. The potter can't say, or the clay can't say to the potter, why hast thou made me thus? Huh? What's it to you? To one, he make a vessel of honor. To another, a vessel of dishonor. Which one are you? Make me a vessel. Pure and holy. Tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Hallelujah. Don't forget if you plan on attending up there at the Hebrews and Negroes, call the dining hall. Today, give me the, give me the names who are planning on attending. Uh, I think the fee is what? Right now it's sitting at 250 ahead. 250 ahead. Let me know if you're coming so I can actually get back with him um, and, and get us a, 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 a group rate. All right? All right. Hey, bless y'all, Israel. Hope y'all enjoyed this. I always enjoy it because it's a message. Ain't nobody going to be able to say, you can't come behind this, man. It's showstopper. It's showtime. Huh? This is it. The buck stop here. I ain't talking about something. I'm talking about right there, man. In the world, we just got finished preaching. It stops there, man. Now, who going to condemn this message? Who in a right mind can condemn this message? Implying that people in their wrong mind are going to be the ones that condemn it. You can dissect it, dissect it all you want. You can't do nothing against this. There's no wiggle room. There's nothing but the truth, the whole truth. So help me, Yah. Hallelujah. Let us stay in Israel. Yah is good. All the time and all the time, Yah is good. Hallelujah. Hmm? I don't know. May I see anything? Could be, could be a spirit, man. You know, you don't know, imps, man. You know what I mean? Lord to the King, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for what our ears have been able to hear. We pray the ones that you have ordained to eternal life have the eyes to see and the ears to hear these words and these truths. We pray these things sink deep down in our heart. Let the words of our mouth. And the meditation of thy heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Yah, my strength and my redeemer. 
dismissing the beautiful name of Yahshua, I'm a sick. Shabbat shalom, the king is coming.